in this shanty town in the dock area of Monrovia. There are about 75,000 people living in, I don't know, a square mile or two at most. They're somehow surviving, but only just. One of the things that's taken me by surprise is the scale of teenage pregnancy here in Liberia. Uh, some young women have between six and eight children, and that is despite having a very high child mortality rate, one of the highest in the world. And the factors are quite simple. If you combine a culture in which women, men and women, traditionally uh, got married very young, and then take away an entire generation that's been lost through civil war, or rather hasn't had a childhood because of civil war, so it has no sense of respect for the opposite sex, no men having few little respect for women. So you have gender-based violence, i.e. not only physical abuse, but rape. It's an incredibly complex and sad issue. There was a young girl today who met at the clinic who can't have been more than 17 and she'd uh, had three children already. So we're now on our way to Buchanan, which is the second city after Monrovia, on a fairly bumpy road, but it's a road that is being uh, rebuilt, and that will allow far better access uh, from, from Monrovia to the uh, outlying regions. And access is a word that keeps coming up in what we've been seeing over the last couple of days. The clinics that we uh, went to see around Monrovia, um, one of the key problems seems to me uh, if you have clinics that are only open eight or four, and you're a pregnant woman and you live three hours away by foot, access to that facility is very tough. And that contributes obviously to complications in birth, if, if the birth is happening at home rather than under medical supervision. Can you describe you know, the, the typical health facility staff that you have here in Grand Bassa and, and to what level they're being um, trained at this stage and any other challenges that there are in the staffing? There is limited number of uh, human resources in health in Liberia. And the, 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 the small number usually prefer to stay in urban areas where they have a better facility in court. But in Grand Bassa, just like in other rural areas, uh, it's a big challenge to attract and uh, retain uh, qualified health workers. Where are we? <laughs> we are now in St. John Clinic. Uh -huh. This is a government facility supported by Marlene. <laughs> okay, I want to so... say a very big thank you to Marlene for a job. Well done for us because they have been my constraint over the years. Well, we used to have only one room and in this one room we do the delivery, we do the NCH, we do the, 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 the short stay, or we just turn it into one room. When you first came here, where did you live? I live in a facility here. I say I slept on an examination bed for nine years. You slept in your office for nine years? Yeah, for nine years, when I was OIC at that time. Right, and, and where do you sleep now? Presently now, I'm sleeping here in this place that I built on my own. This little hut that I built on my own. The you, little hut. You built that? Yes, I built it on my own. That's incredible, Henry. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> I built it on my own, with no assistance from anybody. <laughs> if you want to work for your people, do not think about what you are going to get from the people, but what can you do for them? Mm -hmm. So as we kept talking and appealing, we have now, we have, we, it's patients for us, when our patients come, we understand there's not much constraint. They can deliver freely from here to go to the postpartum ward, they can lie down there for as long as they want to. Another male patient will not be coming, that would be a sheep. 